Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is my wrap up of January 2023. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Alice and I have way too many books and in January I had a good start to the reading year I think. I DNF'd one book and I read 13 books. In terms of the numbers of my 30 book challenge where I have to read 30 books that I already own before I can buy any new books, I did read 10 books from the giant bookshelf that can come off the 30. So 20 books to go in my challenge. I read 13 books. One of those books was a reread, so it didn't count to the 30 book challenge. Two books were audiobooks, which also don't count towards my challenge. One book was a gift that I read as soon as I got it, so I also haven't counted that in the 30 book challenge number because the rules were that if I got gifts, I could add them to the giant TBR at the end of the month and then read them and count them, but I read this one before it even went onto the giant TBR. And as I said, I DNF'd one book. Um, I didn't read any books this month that were from the library and I didn't actually finish the book that I was reading from my mum. Today, as there's 13 books and a DNF, I hopefully won't be saying too much about each individual book uh, because otherwise we'll be here for a very long time. But I am, as always, going to um, go through them from roughly my least favourite to my most and at the end of the video we'll be talking the giant TBR and how the numbers have changed. So stay tuned if you want to find out how I'm getting on with that. Before we go on to talk about the books read and DNF'd, there are three books I have on the go at the moment that I have not yet finished that I started in January. So I did start in January um, Pyongyang, A Journey in North Korea by Guy Deleuzel and this one is translated from the French by Helge Dasher. Uh, I started this in January and although it's quite short and this is a sort of uh, graphic like travel diary sort of book so I am reading this, I didn't want to rush it so I've carried it on into February and that one was a Christmas gift from Gemma from Gemma Books. I'm also carrying on with To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I was buddy reading this but it, we didn't get on too well with it to be honest in the buddy read and um, it's just not really got off the ground yet and it's not really a book that I've felt like picking up that much in the month of January but I definitely want to continue and I've heard it all goes a bit mad in part two so I'm looking forward to getting to part two and it will be a book I'm continuing and that was the book that I was reading from my mum's shelves in January so I'm going to carry that over into February as well. As for audiobooks, I have started and not finished an audiobook which I have borrowed from Borrowbox and that is Marple, which is the collection of Marple short stories that has been written by various modern authors. And I am sort of at the point of wondering with this one whether it would be best to sort of DNF the audiobook and get a physical copy of this one from the library sometime because I haven't really enjoyed the story so far. I don't think this is the audiobook's fault, but I also don't think the audiobook is helping because I just haven't really wanted to listen to it. But I'm going to see how it goes. I may well end up getting this one out of the library at a later date. In order from least favourite to most, let's start with the DNF. I am counting this DNF towards my 30 book challenge because it is leaving the giant TBR permanently and I did try to read it. I read the first chapter of this, which was about 33 pages, and it's not that this is a book that I definitely won't like, it's just that it's a book that I was reading so close to the beginning of the year, and I just thought, I don't want to spend this year reading books that I don't really, really like. I know from chapter one that I'm not that interested in even though it's got quite an intriguing premise. I, I just don't really feel like reading this book. If I ever felt like reading it in the future I would probably get it out of the library but I, I just don't think this one is for me so I DNF'd it and that's Eden Close by Anita Shreve so this will be 
uh, leaving the house, going to find a new and better home with someone who I'm sure will really, really enjoy it. Off to a good start for the year with DNFs. One of my least favourite reads, sadly, of the month was, um, and I would say that all of these books that I read this month I would consider sort of good and above, so there were no bad books, but I just didn't really enjoy this reread that much, and that was Real Murders by Charlene Harris. This is the first book in the Aurora Tea Garden series, and my thoughts on it really were that, uh, one, I had not remembered any of it in detail from the first time of reading it. I do like Aurora Tea Garden as a character and I am looking forward to reading the rest of the series. My main thoughts really are that I'm not that sure but I like cosy mysteries. I have tried this series before, I've actually read all of the books in this omnibus and I will be reading them this rereading them this year and then going on to read the rest of the series with a lovely group of people hosted by Ange, Ange's Book Chatter and Amy at Booktube with Amy and they're hosting a read-along of Aurora Tea Garden and it is called Into the Library. So Aurora is a librarian, I do like her as a character, I think she's great. I do like the concept of this first book which is that Aurora is part of a club that enjoys uh, sort of true crime really. They each present like a real murder and the group is called Real Murders, hence the book's title. I like the premise, I think that there are some good gory moments in this for a cosy mystery. I think that you can tell, having just read like the last books in the Sookie Stackhouse series, you can tell that in the years between writing this and starting the Sookie Stackhouse series, which was a period of 10 years, Charlene Harris definitely um, honed her craft of writing and this is very very clearly an early work of hers and that's fine but about cosy mysteries I'm just not sure I'm really not sure I find cosy mysteries like very easy to get on with but equally I don't think I'm ever gonna find like a five star cosy mystery so if you know of a five star cosy mystery a really really good read that is cosy and it's also a mystery preferably with murder in it. Please let me know because I like my mysteries a bit grittier. But anyway, Aurora Tea Garden, it was a good enough start to the year, I enjoyed revisiting this but there were definitely some bits that felt a bit cringeworthy and there were definitely some bits that I don't love in this. Probably my next most liked book was The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. There were definitely elements of this that I really enjoyed. I was buddy reading this with the lovely Gemma from Gemma Books and we read this early on in the month so I'm already getting hazier on the details. I really really enjoyed the ending of this, the second half of it where there's a lot more adventure was really really strong but there were definitely a few chapters at the beginning where I was really quite bored that were just about Tom Sawyer going to school or going to church and they were fine but I, I just feel like there could have been more adventuring and less of that. I definitely will read The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, I thought he was a great character in this book. I thought there were some brilliant scenes in the caves in this book and towards the end and yeah I really, the best parts of this were Tom and Huck like having adventures together. So This is another mystery that it pains me to say I didn't enjoy as much as I thought I would and this is The Floating Admiral by the Detection Club featuring Agatha Christie, Dorothy L. Sayers, G.K. Chesterton and others. So the idea of this book is that um, each of the mystery writers who formed the Detection Club wrote a chapter of this book and each one of them had to follow on from the previous chapter. Uh, they couldn't just take the story in a completely different direction, forgetting all the clues that had come before. They had to follow on from the previous writer. And I think the most interesting thing about this book was that in the back it provided all of the author's solutions that they would have done if it was their choice to write the solution to the mystery. So I did enjoy that part, I thought that part was in fact stronger than a lot of the chapters in the book. So I actually did start reading this last year and I read at least half of it last year, um, at least half of the actual mystery itself. Uh, in January I finished off the mystery itself and read all of the solutions that the writers had provided. So as I said I enjoyed the solutions more than the actual mystery. The mystery was fine, it was just a bit bogged down in places, like I felt some 
writers chapters were a lot stronger than others and some writers their chapters were just they just really did feel a bit like filler like there was one chapter 39 articles of doubt and it felt like literally a list of all the things that the policeman didn't know about and I just felt like that was filler it felt a bit fillerish, which is harsh of me because that was, I'm sure, a perfectly good writer. So I don't think this probably showcased most of the writers at their best. I felt like this was interesting to read, but I probably won't read it again, although I will keep it in my collection because it's a nice addition. I probably won't rush out to read the other books that the Detection Club wrote in this style. And I don't think Agatha Christie actually participated a second time. I think she wrote the introduction the second time and didn't write a chapter for it. So I like the idea of this more than I enjoyed the book. So I have just remembered that some of these books were for the Past and Future Readathon. I was participating in and was also hosting the Past and Future Readathon in January. And I read Aurora Tea Garden for the book to get me off to a good start for the year. I read Tom Sawyer as book to revisit my youth as it's a children's book. And I actually ended up adding The Floating Admiral as my book from before I was born because I didn't finish my Virginia Woolf book, so I used that one instead. The Rapture is the book that I read as my TBR veteran, and this was one of the books that was on my These Books Will Self-Destruct in 12 months. And hopefully by the time you see this video, you will have seen that video. So you will know that I read The Rapture, and it was fine. I was a little bit disappointed with this because it was billed as apocalyptic, and it was. This was more about a therapist and a uh, a sort of violent, delusional teenager who claims to be able to predict um, like natural disasters. Uh, this was this was fine. It was a perfectly good book. I didn't love it, but I didn't feel very much about it, and I don't think I'll think about it loads afterwards. So sort of middle of the road with this one. I haven't talked about either of the audiobooks, and the audiobooks were probably among my least favourite books of the month, which is a shame because I was really, really enjoying audiobooks in December, but not so much in January. Let me quickly run through those for you. Probably my least favourite read of the month, but maybe <laughs> around that level anyway. It's a fine book, but it wasn't my favourite, was um, Anna of Cleaver by Alison Weir. This is the fourth book in the Six Tudor Queens series and I am having a rest from the Six Tudor Queens series at the moment because I have just <sighs> overdosed on Tudors I think and overdosed on Alison Weir and I'm just not sure that this is the series for me and that sounds really really silly after reading four of the books you wouldn't have thought I would have got that far but what has got me this far is that Catherine of Aragon I thought was a good book too long but good I didn't enjoy the Anne Boleyn one at all but I think that was ruined for me by the fact I listened to it on audiobook and the audiobook narrator I felt I didn't gel with that narrator at all unfortunately and the third book Jane Seymour I really, really enjoyed that because it was about Jane Seymour, who I felt beforehand was my favourite queen, I felt afterwards was still my favourite queen, and I liked it. I liked that one, and I liked Catherine of Aragon, they were fine. I also actually did like Anna of Cleaver. I thought she was a really interesting character, but you could tell that not as much is known about her historically, because this one Although all six of them are fiction, this one comes across as wildly more fictional than the other three. And that was fine. I actually did enjoy Anna's story quite a lot. There were elements of it I didn't enjoy. There were random things inserted that I don't think there's a historical basis for. And I think I do need to go back and read Alison Weir's um, sort of author notes on why she chose to do this which I haven't done so yet because again I was listening to this on audiobook and sadly they don't put the author's notes on the audiobooks which I really think they should. I liked Anna as a character. I still think that all of these books are too long. I know Alison Weir is very very popular and is a good writer but I do think that all of these books so far have been too long for me. I think that all of them could benefit from a little bit more 
cutting of stuff. I would personally favour a book that was a bit more selective. I feel a bit torn about this series because the last two queens are the queens I know the least about, Catherine Howard and Catherine Parr. I would really like to know about both the queens, but I'm not sure I'm ready to read Alison Weir's version of these two queens. I just think I might be done with the series, but I would be really sad to be done. As, as a person who likes things to be complete, I would be sad to not read the last two books in the series. However, I do know that there are other ways and probably other fictional books that I can read about these two queens. There's probably also many, many very good non-fiction books about these two queens. So if you have any recommendations for me, or if you want to tell me, definitely, definitely do go ahead and read the rest of the Tudor Queens series when you feel able. Let me know in the comments because if those two last books are really, really, really good and you really think I should get to them and won't have the same problems with them as I've had with the other books, then I would love to hear from you. Anna Cleaver was fine. It was probably the best narrated out of the three that I've listened to on audiobook. Uh, it was definitely my favourite narrator and Anna definitely elevated herself to certainly one of my favourite characters, if not my favourite queen. Probably didn't need to tell you about the entire series. But yes, the other audiobook I read was also part of a series. It was Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is the second book in, I believe it's a trilogy, The Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And I read The Good Girl's Guide to Murder last year. And I saw that this audiobook was on borrow box and decided to borrow it. I didn't like this as much as A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I still like the characters it was revisiting. I'm not sure I like the direction that the main character Pip is kind of going in in this book and I feel like this book was more of a book to set up her being like an angry and hurt character for like the final book in the trilogy. I could be wrong and I probably will read the final book in the trilogy but this book didn't do an awful lot for me. It, it passed a bit of time but it wasn't a favourite. So those are the audiobooks. I would say that everything onwards is definitely a very good book. I enjoyed all of the rest of these a lot. I'm going to start with Jack Reacher. So I read this for the favourite author prompt. This is Blue Moon by Lee Child. I think this is the 25th book in the Jack Reacher series. I really enjoyed it because it was a Jack Reacher book and it didn't take me very long to read. This one follows Jack Reacher again in a, a finding himself in a strange town. This time he's finding himself looking out for um, an old man who he meets on the bus and he ends up sort of in the middle of a sort of turf war type rivalry of criminal gangs. It's typical Jack Reacher fare. I would say that this wasn't my favourite Jack Reacher but it also wasn't my least favourite. It falls somewhere in the middle and it was fine and it was enjoyable. Next up we have Shift. Shift is the second book in the Silo trilogy by Hugh Howey and I'd already read Wool and I'd read it a lot of years ago. I talk a bit more about this one in my These Books Will Self Destruct as well. It was actually a really quick read considering how chunky it is. Also this book kind of it's actually a prequel rather than a sequel to Wool. We sort of go back and see some of the things that caused the silos to happen. So I definitely am going to pick up the third book in the trilogy which I think is called Dust. I'm really looking forward to sort of getting back into the time that Wool left off from. As post-apocalyptic books go this one is much much more apocalyptic and I like the way that this one juxtaposed the sort of actual time that the apocalyptic event was taking place with the many years later that the silos are. I thought this was done well. I enjoyed the style and there were characters in this that I really did enjoy reading about. I have two more books to talk about that I thought were very good and I have three favourites of the month so let's get on with it. So I'm going to talk about this one next which is Solitaire by Alice Oseman. This was a present from the lovely Emily from Novel Novels for Christmas and this fits into the world of Heartstopper. Solitaire is the story of Tori Spring and Tori Spring is the older sister of Charlie Spring, one of the main characters in the Heartstopper series. And this book was 
written first before all of the Heartstopper series began and this was actually Alice Oseman's first book and I think Tory Spring is a really interesting character and of course a lot of characters overlap into these books and I thought this was a good novel I did really really like reading this and I read this in a day and it's quite a sad story and Tory is not in a very good place in this book I would say. It sort of mainly centres around a couple of relationships in Tori's life but mainly around how she is feeling which is not at all happy in herself. So a lot has been going on in Tori's life, some of which we've seen in the Heartstopper books through just sort of Charlie's journey. But Tori is, is definitely depressed. I thought that the representation of her um, her feelings and her depression was very well, very well done in this book and I believe Alice Oseman wrote this when she was actually a teenager. I enjoyed the portrayal of sort of sick form at school and at sort of school days and I do like a, a YA book like this and this one wasn't too um, heavy on relationships. Uh, it was quite heavy on teenage angst but I didn't mind that and I did really like going into the Heartstopper world again even if this one is very very different and even though there are no illustrations in this one. So Tori is definitely a character that I enjoyed hearing about and I will look out for again when Heartstopper Volume 5 comes out and if there were any future books about her I would definitely read them and I enjoyed the other characters in this book as well. I particularly laughed quite a lot at Tori's attempts to read Pride and Prejudice for English class and how much she really really likes it shall we say. Her essay that she gets told off for really did make me laugh so I enjoyed this book um, it was a good one day read. Next up we have The Outsider by Stephen King. This is a very strange thriller with some very very odd elements and I read this as part of a read-along hosted by me, my dog and books on Instagram and it was really lovely to get to know some of the lovely Instagrammers in the group that read this and yeah it was fun to have some people to read along with. So this wasn't a book that I intended to read this month but it was a book that I ended up reading and very much enjoying. I wasn't sure I was going to like the way King was going with this book which kind of starts off as a straightforward thriller and I don't want to really say any more to spoiler it but I really like the characters in this and even though it went down a route I was hoping it would not go down I did think that this was a good book and I enjoyed it. Since I finished reading this I've actually been watching the TV series of this and I had hoped to make a book versus TV on The Outsider but unfortunately I'm really really struggling with the TV series and particularly the changes that they've made to the characters. A I'm not sure I'm actually going to finish that series and B I don't think I could really do justice to talking about it so that probably won't happen but I did really enjoy The Outsider. Right on to my three favourites of the month and they are all three of them very different books. We have one graphic novel one novel and one non-fiction book and the graphic novel is Nimona by N.D. Stevenson. The novel is Villager by Tom Cox which was the book I was reading for my anticipated read for the month, um, a book I was really looking forward to and the non-fiction book is Immune by Philip Detmer which I was reading for the tandem read-along um, for Immune and I'm not going to go into reviewing Immune here because I have done a <laughs> fairly long in-depth review of Immune in a separate video and please do go and check out that separate video if you would like to hear my review of Immune but also if you would like to see me attempting to draw how viruses invade cells in the body and if you would like to see me doing a quiz to find out which immune cell I am. So yeah I had great fun on this read along and this did turn out to be one of my favourite books of the month and an excellent start to trying to read more non-fiction. So let's talk about Villager by Tom Cox. This is a book I was highly anticipating and this is Tom Cox's first novel which came out last year and this is a deliciously different book. I, I don't quite know what to say about it and I kind of intended to give this its own review video 
and then there's just been quite a lot of videos and um, I just don't know what to say about Villager to do it justice. Yeah, and this book is kind of set in the sort of Dartmoor area in the village of Underhill and it takes place throughout the years. So there are different chapters set in different times. There are multiple chapters that come back, that keep coming back, that are called Me Now. And these Me Now chapters are... Uh, well, I wouldn't want to spoil them for anyone reading them, but they clearly have a bit of an unusual narrator that you kind of try and work out in your head uh, more about as the book goes on. The other chapters kind of flip backwards and forwards through time. There's one in the 90s, there's one in um, the 60s, 2019 is the next one. Then there's one in 2043, um, 2012, 2014, 1932 and 2099. At first it really did seem to me like a short story collection and I very much enjoyed Tom Cox's short story collection Help the Witch and it was reading a bit like that to me but the further you get into this book the more you notice the overlapping details between all the stories, the threads that tie all of this together and I just thought this was a really clever book, a really different book and it really draws on a lot of different things that Tom Cox has written about through the years in his non-fiction, in his short stories. It sort of gathers together definitely a lot of local folklore, certainly music is a strong thread through this as is the countryside, the nature, greenery, golf which I know Tom Cox wrote some books about previously and it, it's just, it's not a book that is easy to describe. But if you do have a chance to read Villager, it is delightfully different. This is not like any other book that I've ever read, um, apart from elements of it are like Tom Cox's other work. So he is not a writer that really conforms, and I love that. I absolutely am here for that. And whatever Tom Cox writes next, I will definitely be getting hold of it and reading it. So yeah, this villager was absolutely a favourite of the month. And the final favourite of the month was a graphic novel, which was Nimona by N.D. Stevenson. I was kindly sent this by Gemma from Gemma Books. And Gemma also sent me three other books, which I haven't read yet. So they are going to now add to the giant TBR and they will be eligible for me to read for the 30 book challenge next month. So I read this before it even adds to the TBR, but that's fine. I couldn't contain myself from reading Nimona because it's just lovely. I really, really enjoyed this book. All three of these books, I came so close to giving them five stars. I just didn't, but I think that in hindsight, I will come to realize that that was a bit stingy uh, because all three of these favorites were really, really strong books. And I love Nimona. Nimona is this character here. This is her boss, Ballista Blackheart, who she is sidekick to. This is just a brilliant tale. There's friendship in this. There's, there's sort of love between friends. And it just sort of talks about what it means to be a hero, what it means to be a villain, and what it means to have people in your life who care about you. And I, I really love this. Lovely book. I'm really, really glad that Gemma sent me this because it just had a bit of everything. It was a bit fantasy. There are like mythical creatures in this, but it also is a bit sort of futuristic and sci there are some sort of sci-fi-ish gadgets in it. So it's kind of a mashup of sci-fi and fantasy. And I really, really loved that. I really loved the main character of Nimona. The only reason really that I didn't give this one a five star is because I wanted a different ending and that isn't the author's fault. That is just what I wanted. That was just what my heart wanted. So yeah, uh, loved Nimona. Highly recommend it as a graphic novel. Those were the 13 books that I read in January and the one book that I DNF'd. So it's finally time to find out what happened to the giant TBR in January. So at the start of January, the giant TBR stood at 177 books. And I vowed, of course, not to buy any books 
Now, there were some incoming books to the giant TBR, and that was because I received my subscription book, When Ghosts Come Home by Wiley Cash, and this was allowed because this was a Christmas present, and I will continue to get subscription books throughout the year, so looking forward to those. And I also have my other three books that Gemma sent me. She sent me S, a novel about the Balkans by Slavenka Draculic, which is translated by Marko Ivic. That sounds like a really, really hard hitting book. Um, Gemma also sent me Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, which I can't wait to get to because I've never read it before. And she also sent me a book that I hope to have a go at at some point. I'm not sure if I'm intelligent enough to deal with it, but I'll give it a go, and that is The Divine Comedy by Dante. We will see. So those three are adding on to the Giant TBR, plus the book from my subscription. So four books added to the Giant TBR, which takes it from 177 to 181. Now, I also unhauled two books from my TBR during my These Books Will Self-Destruct. That was The Last Girl by Jane Casey and Along Came the Spider by James Patterson. That brings us back down to 179. There was also my DNF, which is now leaving as well. So that brings us back down to 178. And I read nine books from the giant TBR. Nine which just shows you what I can do when I'm not reading library books. Those nine were The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, The Outsider, The Rapture, Blue Moon, Villager, Immune, Shift, Solitaire, and The Floating Admiral. And with those nine being read, that brings us down to 169 books. Whew. So I'm really, really pleased with that really pleased with 169 books, particularly as it was a month where I did add some books. I don't think I'll be adding more than just my subscription book in February, hopefully, and I am hoping to stay on track with the 30 book challenge, but I am having to read some library books for the BookTube prize, so we will see how much that holds me up in February. That is all from me today for my wrap up and my first check in with the giant TBR of 2023 and I hope you're all reading really good books. Do let me know in the comments down below what was your favourite book of January. If you have enjoyed this video today please do give it a like, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now!